Everyone loves the idea of monthly dividend stocks, and while stock paying out dividends every single month doesn't technically make it any better than other stocks, it's a great feeling seeing that cash flow come in every single month. Now the reality is there are very few stocks that are quality and pay out dividends every single month. I mean, off the top of my head, I can name a few. We have companies like Realty Income, Main Street Capital, and we also have Stag Industrial, but one of the lesser talked companies is one we're going to be looking at today, and that is Agree Realty Corporation, stock ticker ADC, trading at $61.48. Now, they haven't always paid out dividends monthly. In fact, if we go over to the Dividend History tab here on Seeking Alpha and zoom out, we can see they made this change actually in early 2021. Before that, we can see they were actually making quarterly dividend payments. So this company is now paying out big monthly dividends, and we can see they actually have a starting yield sitting at about 4.84%, so high starting dividend yield and monthly dividend payments. Now, over the past year, like most REITs, they're down quite a bit due to the high interest rate environment we're operating under, down by about 5%, and if we look at them year to date, down by about 2.34%. Now, because this company just recently started paying out monthly dividends, let's jump over to my dividend breakdown sheet so we can see those dividend payouts on a yearly basis. So we'll come up here, plug in ADC, and hit enter. And what we can see when this data loads in is those yearly dividend payments have grown by quite a bit over the past decade, especially for a real estate investment trust. We can see that five-year dividend CAGR sitting at about 5.64%, which I think is good for a REIT that also has a yield of around 5%. And keep in mind, like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. Now, one of the things you'll also notice on this spreadsheet it's showing a payout ratio of 167.75%. Now, typically this would be a huge concern for me as an investor, but we have to keep in mind, again, this is a real estate investment trust. There's a very specific metric we have to look at to better understand the safety of these dividend payments. And it's actually not the payout ratio and it's not even the free cash flow payout ratio. What we wanna look at is the AFFO payout ratio. If we jump over to Seeking Alpha and click on dividends, click on dividend safety and scroll down, we should be able to find this metric and we can see it right here. AFFO payout ratio forward looking for this company sitting at about 72.98%. Now, what is AFFO? What does that stand for? Well, AFFO stands for adjusted funds from operations and essentially what it does is it provides a more accurate representation of a REIT's ability to generate cash flow from its operations. And actually one of the things we can do is if we jump over to the company's most recent earnings report, we can see right here, they said that their adjusted funds from operation per share increased 4.6% to $1.03. Now, in my opinion, this is the most important metric to look at when you're analyzing a real estate investment trust. And one of those reasons, like we just saw, is it gives us a better idea of the dividend sustainability. REITs are required by law to pay out 90% of their earnings in the form of dividends. So the payout ratio isn't always the most accurate representation. So like I just said, we look at the AFFO payout ratio, but there's more to adjusted funds from operation than just understanding dividend sustainability. It's also going to help us better understand the company from a cash flow perspective. It helps provide a clear picture of the REIT's cash flow available for distribution to shareholders, again, crucial for income focused investment. Investors. So if this REIT's going to be able to continue to grow its dividend payments and distributions over time, they're going to have to grow their AFFO over time, which we can see in the scenario in the most recent earnings report, they were able to do by growing AFFO per share by about 4.6%. A couple of other key metrics we can see from this earnings report. They invested approximately 140 million in 50 retail net lease properties. We'll talk about that here just a little bit in a second, but we can also see the balance sheet very well positioned at 4.3 times performing net debt to recurring EBITDA. And again, this is something else we'll talk about here in just a moment. Now I wanna jump into the investor's presentation and point out some key aspects of this company that make them a pretty quality REIT in my opinion. But first off, there's something really interesting that's been going on within this company lately that I have to point out and that is the amount of insiders buying this company. We can see over the past year, there have been a multitude of insiders buying and there have been zero sales. And this reminds me of the famous investor Peter Lynch's quote about insider buying. Insiders might sell their shares for any number of reasons, but they buy them for only one, they think the price will rise. So this should give you a lot of confidence as a potential investor in this company because insiders have been loading up on this stock over the past year and we haven't seen any sales. Now, with that being said, there is something else that I do wanna point out. If we jump back over to Seeking Alpha and go to the summary tab, this company has a little bit more short interest than I typically like seeing from potential investments. We can see it's sitting at about 6.51%. I don't like seeing these big hedge funds bet against companies that I could potentially own. 
Now, if we jump into the investor's presentation, we can actually get a better idea of who ADC is and what they do. But we can see this is a net lease REIT focused on the acquisition and development of high quality retail properties. And it's been publicly traded since 1994. If we jump over to the seventh slide, we can get a better idea of what their top tenants look like. We can see these tenants are pretty popular companies you're very likely familiar with. We have companies like Walmart, Tractor Supply, Dollar General, Best Buy, CVS, and a lot of other companies you should be familiar with. And so if we break it down by sector, we can see grocery stores are going to be the majority of their portfolio at about 9.7%. We also have home improvement, pretty large position at 8.6, tire and auto service 8.5, convenience stores 8.4, and then it jumps down to dollar stores sitting at about 7.6%. We have off price retail at 6.1, general merchandise around 6%, and everything other than that it's below 6% as we can see here. Now, the great thing about these tenants is 69% of them are considered investment grade. And for reference, this is actually even higher than Realty Income, one of the most popular monthly REITs out there. This is considered one of the strengths of this company. Now, something that I definitely want to point out when looking at this company is the strength of their balance sheet. We can see ADC has been at or below 4.5 times pro forma net debt to recurring EBITDA since 2018. Now, if you're wondering what that means, let me explain. First off, we have to understand EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So this is basically a financial ratio telling us how much net debt they have compared to how much money they're bringing in before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And in ADC scenario, that financial ratio comes out to about 4.5 times. So it kind of gives us an idea of the health of their balance sheet and how easily they can repay those debts. Now you may be wondering, is 4.5 times good or is it bad? If we compare ADC to Realty Income, again, stock ticker O, ADC is sitting at about 4.5x, while for O, this is sitting at 5.3x. And typically, as we can see, the sweet spot in the net lease REIT segment is gonna be at around 5x. So ADC is actually better than most REITs in this position, and they're even better than Realty Income. So from a balance sheet perspective, things seem to be looking pretty good for this company. And then finally, if we look at the 23rd slide, we can see what most investors love about this company, and it's the growing, well-covered monthly dividend, like we already talked about. The dividend payments do appear to be safe, but here's what's also very, very impressive. Yes, nice starting dividend yield, monthly dividends, but look at the rate that they're growing at. 6% plus 10-year dividend CAGR. That's absolutely phenomenal, and this is showing from 2012 to 2022. So this company checks all the boxes from a dividend perspective. Like I said, it looks sustainable. They're paying out every single month. The dividend payments are growing, and they have a very nice starting dividend yield of close to 5%. That sounds like a pretty good deal so far. Now, I do want to show you one of the things that a lot of investors are concerned about when it comes to ADC. If we come over to my stock screener, plug in ADC, and hit enter. If we come down here and look at shares outstanding, we can see this has grown dramatically over the past decade, going from around 13 million in 2013, now all the way up to 95 million at the end of 2023. Now, this is scary because if you're a shareholder in this company, then you know that this company is greatly diluting your ownership. But we also have to keep in mind, there are typically two different ways that a REIT can grow. Because remember, they have to pay out 90% of their earnings in the form of dividend payouts. So one, they can take out new debt, which isn't always the best choice depending on the interest rate environment and interest rates are pretty high right now. So their second option is to issue new shares, which we can see this has definitely been part of the strategy for this company over the past decade, especially since 2021 and 2020. So they have been issuing a lot of new shares. It is diluting shareholders, but really this has always been a part of the plan. If interest rates increase, they just simply issue new shares so they can continue to grow. Now, with all of this being said, is Agree Realty Corporation trading at $61.47 trading at a good value? Again, over the past five years, we can see they're down by about 6%, and over the past 10 years, they've actually done pretty good for a REIT, not including dividends up over 100%. So again, are they trading at a good value? To answer that, let's go ahead and jump over to my REIT valuation spreadsheet and run it through a few different valuation models. We'll come up here, plug in ADC, and hit enter, and this data will load in. And one of the things we can notice about this company is if we come down here, Look at the beta, it's sitting at about 0.59. So we should see very low levels of volatility from this company, quite a bit lower than that of the market. Now, the first valuation we'll run it through is gonna be our AFFO multiples valuation. And again, the idea is we should be able to value this company based on how the market is valuing companies that are similar in structure. And like always, there's no perfect comparable. But we can see I went with four companies right here, took their stock price, divided by their AFFO to get the price to AFFO multiple. And the average for these companies was sitting at about 14.44. Now for ADC, it's actually sitting at about 15.57 right now, giving us an intrinsic value of $57.06, 
just a little bit lower than that current trading price. Now we do have to keep in mind, I think there are a couple of things that a lot of people really like about this company that could potentially make it trade at a premium, like the balance sheet, like them from a dividend perspective, and they still have a lot of room for growth, while some people argue that companies like Realty Income are a little bit too large to be able to grow at the same rate that they have over the past 10 to 20 years. So something to keep in mind. Now the next valuation we'll look at will be our historical price to FFO valuation. I love this one for REITs. It helps us understand how they've traded historically and we can compare how they're trading right now. So we take all the share prices over the past decade and what it's doing right now and divide by the historical FFO per share over the past decade. So we get the historical price to FFO. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more so we can take a closer look at this. We can see right now, the historical price to FFO is sitting at 16.93. And if we look at what the average has been over the past decade, it's actually 19.45. So we can see, especially since 2016, it's been sitting at 19 or above. But over the past few years, since 2021, we can see this has been trending downward. And at the end of 2023, it was sitting at 17.77. And as of right now, all the way down to 16.93. So we did find that compared to its peers, it looks like it's a little bit overvalued maybe, but compared to how this company has traded historically, it's actually quite a bit undervalued. Pretty interesting perspective to keep in mind. Now, lastly, we want to look at the dividend discount model, and this is one of my favorite ways to value a dividend paying company because it values the company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing over time. So you can see we have the dividend payouts here and the yearly dividends here and the dividend growth rates. So assuming a dividend growth rate of about 3.25% and a discount rate of 8%, we come to a dividend discount model price per share of $65.21 for this company, which is about 6% above that current trading price. So when we jump over to our output tab, we can see the two valuations we used here, AFFO multiples and dividend discount model. The intrinsic value when we average these two together comes out to 61.13 which is right at the current trading price for this company. But keep in mind, historical price to FFO isn't listed here because it doesn't give us a specific price per share, but we did find that the company was slightly undervalued when using this model, so something else to keep in mind. So with a 5% margin of safety, you could see our acceptable buy price at about $58 per share, 10% at about $55 per share. And if we look at the historical trading price for this company over the past five or so years, we can see there have definitely been opportunities at around $55 per share. I would say this is one of the higher quality REITs, so we don't typically see huge sell-offs. And of course, that's with the exception of the 2020 sell-off. As for me, I don't plan on adding shares of this company to my portfolio right now, but it's definitely on my watch list and one that I'll keep a close eye on. If we do see interest rate cuts in the next six months, that could definitely be a catalyst for this company moving forward. But the beauty of a quality REIT like Agree Realty Corporation is even if the share price remains stagnant until we see interest rate cuts, you get a very predictable high yield monthly dividend payment and a growing dividend payment going into your portfolio every single month. So go ahead, let me know what you think of Agree Realty Corporation in the comments down below if you plan on buying or selling or just simply keeping it on your watch list. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets, it allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.